In this video, I'm going to show you what it means for a function to be differentiable. So a function is differentiable at a if f prime of a exists. So it's differentiable on an open interval a to b if it is differentiable at every number in the interval. So what does this mean? So we're going to take a look at three ways in which a function can fail to be differentiable. But actually, I'm going to show you the first one where it can be differentiable, and then I'll show you two other ways where it fails to be differentiable. So finding f prime of a means, sorry, f prime of a means finding the limit. Uh, therefore, a function is differentiable at those points where the limit exists, meaning where it is defined. So this first example here, we have a piecewise function. And we want to know if this piecewise function is differentiable at x equals 1, because that's where the two functions join together. Individually, we can see that they're lines and a reciprocal, and they are differentiable everywhere, except on the second one, it's not differentiable at 0. Okay, So we'll talk about that later. But what about where they connect? Is it differentiable where they join? So in order for us to do this, we're going to take a look at each of the deriv derivatives from the left hand and the right hand. So the left hand derivative, we're going to take a look at the first piece. So this is where the limit um, as h approaches 0. And we're going to use the definition. So f of 1 plus h minus f of 1 all divided by h. So remember, we are looking at the left hand side. So we're going to plug in 1 plus h wherever we see x. So we have 2 minus 1 plus h minus. So this is our first part of our function. And then our f of 1 would be 2 minus 1. All divided by h. And when we simplify, we're going to have 2 minus 1. So that's going to be 1 minus h. And in the second brackets, we have minus 1, all divided by h. And this simplifies really nicely. 1 minus 1, we get negative h over h, which equals negative 1. So the limit of the left-hand derivative is negative 1. Let's check the right-hand derivative. So the right-hand derivative is actually going to be the same initial part written out. So it'll be f of 1 plus h minus f of 1 all divided by h. But this time we're going to use the second function, which is the 1 over x piece. So we're going to find the limit as h approaches 0. It'll be 1 over 1 plus h minus, and we're going to plug in 1 this time into the reciprocal. So it'll be 1 over 1 all divided by h. And we need a common denominator in order for us to join the two fractions together. So this will be 1 minus 1 plus h, all divided by 1 plus h. Now just to make it a little bit more concise, I'm going to, instead of writing this big fraction line, I'm going to put divided by h on the right side there. And I'm going to do a little bit of simplifying. So I have 1 minus 1, which is negative, or actually, which is, sorry, which is 0. And then I'll have the negative h over 1 plus h, and then times 1 over h. And then the h's cancel off, and we get the limit as h approaches 0 of negative 1 over 1 plus h. And then when we plug 0 into this limit, we get negative 1. Now, notice that the left-hand derivative equals the right-hand derivative. So because of that, so since the left-hand derivative, so LHD equals RHD, which is the right-hand derivative, the two-sided limit exists, meaning that F is differentiable. at x equal to 1. Now, if we take a look at the graph, and so we draw the first piece, 
has a slope of 2, and it's a negative slope, so I'm just going to draw. Oops, sorry. It was a little bit skewed. Okay. So we get a line that goes down. And the other side, we get the reciprocal. So it's open circle, but actually at one, it actually is the same value. And it goes down like this. Now, when we take a look at this graph, we can see that the function has a tangent line at every point on this curve, uh, meaning that all of the curves, or every part of this curve, and turns are smooth. So this is the hard part that's hard to tell if it's smooth because maybe something else is happening there. And that's what we're going to take a look at the next example. So in the next one, um, I want to show you that continuity and differentiability are also related properties. So if f is differentiable at a, then f is continuous at a. Now the converse of this theorem is false. Converse means that uh, we're going to if we reverse this statement. So there are functions that are continuous but not differentiable. So the converse of this statement would mean that if f is continuous at a, then f is differentiable. But that is not true. Okay. So um, it might be true sometimes, but not all the time. So we can't always say that that would be a theorem. So we're going to take a look at an example at this next piecewise function too take a look at how this happens. So um, I've actually drawn the graph already for you. Um, so it looks as though there might be something happening at x equals 0, which we call a corner. Okay, But we don't know. So we're going to actually use our left-hand derivative and our right-hand derivative to test this out. So our left-hand derivative, so the limit as h approaches 0, is so I'm going to kind of take a little bit of shortcut. I'm not going to put the um, f of um, 0 plus h, so I'm actually going to just plug it right into the function this time. So I'm going to go 2 times bracket 0 plus h minus 2 times 0, all divided by h. So this gives us the limit as h approaches 0, and this is already 0, so we have 2h minus 0, so all over h. So we have the limit as h approaches 0 is 2. Okay, let's check out the right-hand derivative. So the right-hand derivative, um, so we're going to find the limit as h approaches 0. Um, so again, we're going to put in 0 plus h, so we have 0 plus h minus 0 plus h all squared, and then minus, so this is the first part of the function, and then minus 0 minus 0 squared, all over h. Now it's a little bit redundant to write all the zeros, but I just wanted to show you, just for extra practice, um, what values we're actually plugging into the equation. So when I simplify all this, this will, of course will be 0 in the second piece, but actually in the first big brackets, I have h minus h squared, all divided by h. And our numerator is all divisible by h, so I'm going to reduce this to 1 minus h. And when I plug in 0, notice that I get a limit, our right-hand derivative, of 1. So notice this time that my left-hand derivative is 2, but my right-hand derivative is 1. So the left-hand derivative does not equal the right-hand derivative even though the function is continuous. Okay, so therefore, the, oops, so therefore, the two-sided limit At f prime of 0 is undefined, so 
It is not differentiable. Add x equals zero. So this actually goes back to the first point that I had made. So in order for um, a function to be differentiable, it has to be defined. And this is not defined because the left hand, when I found the limit of um, the first piece and the second piece, we noticed that the limits were actually different. Remember, when we're trying to find the limit, um, because I'm using the definition of derivative, we're actually finding the limit, but it also leads to the derivative. And since the limits are different, um, it is not differentiable. And in this case, this, which you can't really tell from the picture, this is what we would call a corner. All right, so we have our last example. And our third possibility is that the curve has a vertical tangent line when x equals a. So this means that the tangent line becomes steeper and steeper as x approaches a. Um, f is continuous at a, and the limit of the absolute value of the f prime of x as x approaches a is equal to infinity. So the derivative does not exist. So I'm going to show you an example, which I don't know if we've seen one of these before, but suppose we have f of x equals x to the two to the power, sorry, x equals to the power of two fifths. So let's graph it, and then we're going to find the derivative as x approaches zero from the right and the left. So in this one, we're not going to actually use the definition. We're going to kind of go back to the old way, and let's use numbers. So if I'm approaching zero from the right, let's try the numbers negative 10, negative 1, negative 0 0.1. Um, from the right, we will see check 10, 1, and 0 0.1. Now when I plug these numbers into my calculator, I get 2.512. Now this is where we're approaching zero um, get one and then 0 0.398 if i go and approach zero from the other side <coughs> excuse me i get 2.512 one and then also 0 0.398 now let's see what this looks like when i graph these numbers so i have negative 10 and positive 10. And let's just say this is 1, 2, and 3. So I got 2.5. And then at 1, negative 1, it's about 1. Then at negative 0.1, it's about 0.398. All right, so if I pick numbers closer and closer, you can see that it actually is approaching 0. And what this looks like is it looks something like this, okay? And the graph does keep going in both directions. So you'll notice that as I approach zero from the left side, I am kind of getting, it looks like that value y is actually getting closer to negative infinity. So if you drew tangent lines here, you can see that that tangent line is getting closer to negative infinity. If I go from the come from the right side and I draw my tangent lines, I can see these are all positive, but as I get closer to zero, the tangent line is getting very steep as well. And that tangent line is going to positive infinity. So because of this, um, that point at zero, this derivative is not differentiable at the point zero. And this function actually has a special name and it is called a cusp. So a function has a cusp at a if f is continuous at a and f prime of x approaches infinity from one side of a and it approaches negative infinity from the other side of A. And this is called an extreme case of a corner.